Hey, what's up all you lovely learners out there in learning land? Tyler from 10thumbspro.com coming at you with another ukulele tutorial like we do every single Wednesday and Saturday. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit subscribe and ring the bell so you never miss a lesson. Today we're talking technique and we're talking scales and specifically we're talking how to use scales to master the entire fretboard from left to right. A lot of times when we study scales and scale shapes, we end up going up and down vertically. But when we play solos or when you learn solos, you'll see a lot of good solos are going left to right as well as up and down. These two scale exercises will help you master the fretboard, give you fretboard fluency, and get you going left to right for your solos and your improvisation. Hit that like button, it really does help us. Printable tabs for this tutorial by becoming a Patreon, you'll see links up here in the notes. Links to the specific tab pinned in the first comment in the comment section, as well as timestamps to jump to the part in the tutorial that you're learning. Check the description for additional links, my email for one-on-one -on -one lessons via Zoom or Skype, as well as our Instagram, play yourself doing this lesson, tag us at 10 Thumbs Pro, and we'll share it on our story. Cool, let's do it. Grab the ukulele. Brain and attention span. Once you have those three things, follow me on in and let's break this lesson down together. Come on in, let's do it. All right, so we're going to be doing this from the point of view of the G major pentatonic. Now, if you've been playing for some time, you probably know this particular shape. Two, four, three, five, two, five. Shape four of the... G major pentatonic or the E minor pentatonic, it's relative minor. The both G major shape that you know and the E minor both sit within this shape. Songs like Wonderful Tonight, Gravity, make use of this shape. And so if you're improvising a blues solo in the key of E, you almost certainly solo in this shape. If you're soloing in the key of E minor or G major, you also almost certainly use this shape. But how do the masters go left to right across the fretboard? Well, they do so by developing muscle memory and learning the fretboard through scale exercises that move left to right. So today we have two of them that will help you understand the entire fretboard. Our first one looks like this. Also, low G, you can follow along with a high G. They're the same notes, you're just an octave up. It's gonna sound a little funny, but you're still building the same muscle memory. Ultimately, when it comes time to improvising, maybe you'll only use the C, E, and A strings, but you should still know what's happening on this G string, even if you're not using it, okay? So follow along, even if you have a high G. Okay, here we go. Exercise number one. We're going to do this string by string. Our first string is the G string. We'll play open, two, four. And let's just go up and down that a couple times. Okay, so now we're going to add the C string. For the C string, we're going to play two, four, seven, nine. Now, these dots, they act as a road map. That's what they're there for. So we have them on three and five. So when we hit our two and four, we're playing to the left of one dot and then in between two dots. Seven is on a dot and nine is right before a dot. So memorizing where they're at in relation to those dots really, really does help. They're, they're mile markers, they're references, they're landmarks. So we add the second string, two, four, seven, nine, nine, seven, four, two. Two, four, seven, nine, nine, seven, four, two. Two, four, seven, nine, nine, seven, four, two. Both of the strings. Oops, both of the strings. Oh, two, four, two, four, seven, nine, nine, seven, four, two, four, two, oh. Our next string, the E string, is seven, ten, twelve. And ten and twelve on the ukulele are also marked by dots. So is seven. So all three of these are just dot, dot, dot. 
da 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 seven ten twelve twelve ten seven seven ten twelve twelve ten seven we add that to the entire mix and we get oh two four two four seven nine seven ten twelve twelve ten seven nine seven four two four two oh all right only one more string and this last one we're going to go 10 12 14 and then we're going to go back to 12 or back to 10 because 10 is our g note a root note and we're going to resolve on the root note so we go 10 12 14 12 but let's practice it just up and down 10 12 14 14 12 10 10 12 14 14 12 10 again when you play this exercise you're going to go so you can hear the resolution all right all four strings from the top here we go let's count it out oh two four two four seven nine seven ten twelve ten twelve forty ten all right let's do it again Once you've mastered going up, you should master going down. 14, 12, 10, 12, 10, 7, 9, 7, 4, 2, 4, 2, O, oh, G. So you would just use this as a warm up. Take five minutes before you play every single time you play every single day. Warm up. Go through this up and down within a week. You're really, really going to be impressed with how fluently you're playing that. And then match that with the tutorial that we did all five shapes for the E minor. And then you'll start to see how these connect. And then when it comes time to soloing, you're going to be able to connect your shapes much more fluidly. make much more interesting solos and much prettier melody if you're composing melody. All right, exercise number two. For exercise number two, we're actually going to start on this end of the fretboard and work our way this way. We're going to break this one into chunks. So we're going to start, the first chunk is going to be 14, 12, 10, down to the A string, 12, 10, down to the C string, 11. The next chunk is going to be 12, 10, 7, and note we start here on the second note of the first little riff, 12, 10, 7, we're going to go down and play 10, 7, and then we're going to play the ninth fret of the C string. So just the second riff, 12, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9. We put them both together, we get 14, 12, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9. The next little section of this riff is going to go 10, 7, 5, 10, 7, 5, and then we go 7, 5, 7. 10, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7. 14, 12, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 10, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7. The next section, 7, 5, 2, 5, 3, 4. 7, 5, 2, 5, 3, 4. Four, three, five, two, seven, or five, seven. Seven, five, two, five, three, four. Four, three, five, two, five, 
seven. From the top, 14, 12, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9, 10, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 7, 5, 2, 5, 3, 4. Hootie hoo. Okay, another thing too is the first thing you want to do is get these under your fingers. And then the second thing you want to do once you feel like you can play them confidently is start really slow with the metronome and then like 60 beats per minute, play them at a quarter even if you want. You could play them at eighths as well. And then like every day, move the metronome up five beats per minute. <clears throat> okay, so the next section, the next one goes five, two, zero. And then we're gonna go three, zero, two. Five two zero three zero two two zero three two or zero two five five two zero three zero two two zero three zero two five from the top fourteen twelve ten twelve ten eleven twelve ten seven ten seven nine ten seven five seven five seven seven five two five three four five two zero three zero two all right last one two zero three zero two three we finish on our three our major root so the last one goes two zero three zero two three two zero three zero two three if you were to work backwards, this one's kind of funny backwards. You go three, two, zero, three, zero, two. So this one's a little different because we're kind of crowded at the end, right? From the top, all the shapes. 14, 12, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12, 10, 7, 10, Seven, nine, seven, ten, five, seven, five, seven, seven, five, two, five, three, four, five, two, zero, three, zero, two, two, zero, three, zero, two, three. And there you have it, folks. That's another great exercise to work all the way down here. You'll notice that that exercise covers the entire scale on the A string. It covers the entire scale on the um, E string, and it also covers the entire scale here on the C string. It just does so a little more subtly, but it plays the whole pentatonic actually. So it would really, if you have a high G, that one's great for you because you're not touching the G string. Um, then once you feel really confident with both of them, the last step to do a great warm up. Incorporate this every day in your practice. Do it. Start it out slow. Gradually get faster you're gonna be amazed at the results within two, three weeks, how much more fluent you're gonna be in your soloing and your jamming. Combine the two and you get something like this. You do that every day and you're gonna be amazed at how much more comfortable you're gonna be moving laterally across the fretboard. There you have it, fretboard fluency in two exercises, how to get jamming across the entire scale. Add that into your warm up, and you're gonna be blown away by the dividends. All right, 10 Thumbs Pro, catch you next Wednesday, next Saturday. Take care, yeah. Excellent everyone, thank you so much for watching to the very end here at 10thumbspro.com. We appreciate you trusting your learning with us and hopefully this will help you Get out of those boxes and start connecting the shapes. Start soloing left to right and feeling more like a master. Okay? Master! Master! Learning to play the ukulele left to right. Master! Master! I listened to Metallica late last night. Master! Master! All right, so you're, a ma you're not a master of the puppets. You're a master of the scale shapes. Keep on rocking and rolling, and we'll catch you next Wednesday or next Saturday for ukulele. Monday, if you play guitar, subscribe and learn. Ring that bell. Think about becoming a Patreon. Cheaper than a cheap cheeseburger. Make sure you hit that like, and until next time, have a lovely day. Take care.